Hey everyone, it's Ivan, KitBadger.com, out here for another gun review, and today we're talking rifles, these by Sons of Liberty Gunworks, this one right here being the M76 as well as the M89. If you're unfamiliar with Sons of Liberty Gunworks, they make rifles out of San Antonio, Texas, and super passionate about it, as well as just honestly guns in general. So I have had these for, I don't know, probably over a year, maybe two years now at this point, and I've been putting in a lot of time with them. This one right here being the M76, well, this guy right here, M89. So there are definitely some differences in the two. First, I'll kind of go over what is largely the same between these two. If you saw my video, I actually had the opportunity to go out to Sons of Liberty Gunworks and take part a little bit in building this, mainly watching armors at their craft, put in stuff together to include this gun, most of it anyway. And yeah, pretty cool. Like just kind of everything sourced, like, hey, what are the best components we can get? Forge lower. I mean, all the attention to detail across the board to include the castle nut actually being staked in two places, or sorry, some of them are staked in two places. This one's actually staked in three, depending on how it tightens. Sometimes they can only stake it in two places, but I mean, honestly, some companies are lucky to get it staked in one place. And something I should mention too, pretty much all the guns ship with B5 systems furniture. So think stock and grip. This I swapped out because doing a bunch of R&D stuff with stone rifle grip, now the Kung Fu grip from Die Free Company. But yeah, overall pretty cool. So we get into, again, as I'd mentioned earlier, similarities between this M76 and the M89. So some things Sons of Liberty Gunworks are known for is one of which, bolt carrier groups, like a lot of people, even if they don't have a Sons of Liberty Gunworks rifle or upper, go out of their way to basically buy bolt carrier groups. And one of the things I find kind of interesting about that is they're not doing anything like special, we'll say, in that they're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Like, oh, you know what? We're going to do this and it's going to be better. Like, no, we're just going to do it the right way. And by the right way, I mean, there is so much data on like the platform, like AR-15, M16, all that stuff. And there is absolutely a right way, like a spec. It's just a lot of people don't actually build things to spec. And so they go out of their way to do just that. And then the other thing is their barrels, which are 4150 chrome moly vanadium, probably mispronouncing that. But again, going back to like a spec, like mill standard spec for barrel lining, everything like that. And one in seven twists, so you can shoot heavier bullets, more modern bullets, and then appropriate size gas ports with, I wanna say a 0.75 inch gas block, pretty much all their barrels. And of course, corrosion resistant coating, as well as M4 feed ramps, all that stuff, which I mean, you look at those things I just mentioned, bolt carrier group and barrel, pretty much the heart of the gun and a trigger to hit said bolt carrier or firing pin rather. But yeah, they basically do it right. And that kind of is where largely all their guns overlap. And then we get into differences between the M76 and the M89. It comes down largely to the handguard on these guns. One being a kind of older model, again, still works great. And the other one being kind of a more purpose-driven newer model with some other features, depending on what you're looking for. So I guess we'll start initially with kind of the older model. Right here, the M76 rail, it actually tensions with a screw back here, holding everything together. And as we move along the rail, we have a number of different vent sections kind of around it, keeping M-lock at the three, six, and nine. And then once we get up front, we have places, again, where you would actually use it. We actually have at roughly, I don't know, like 10 o'clock and two o'clock respectively. We also have extra M-lock sections, but the rest is pretty much open for venting, getting rid of that heat. 
from the M89, we actually have these two index pieces, which keep this from ever being able to actually rotate away from the upper receiver. And not that it would, you basically have these different screws down here, tightening on the barrel nut. And then kind of the same thing as far as your venting and everything here. But then when you get down here, just like the other one, we have those at roughly 10 and two o'clock, the ability to mount more things with that M lock. Again, this being a shorter rail, but this one being the M89. When it comes down to like practical terms, what is the difference between the two? This one is, while they're both like incredibly sturdy and robust, this one a little bit more so. So why is that important? Where would it actually come into play? Like I said, shot this a ton, it does an amazing job. Same with this one. But if you are in a place where your gun is really hard use and you have forward mounted aiming devices like lasers, things like that, this is gonna be probably a better choice. Like the lockup of this, like handguard forend, is arguably better than this. And you have anti-rotation. So if you're running through buildings, like jumping in and out of vehicles, whatever, banging this thing around, and then you need to make a low probability shot. It's very, very precise, and there's a lot on the line. This handguard is not gonna rotate. Like you will have whatever zero you have set, laser, aiming device, whatever it may be, again, with this handguard. I'm not saying you won't be able to do it with this. This is just even more so, really, kind of comes down to application. Which brings me to what has been my experience? How have I used these guns? Well, I have shot these guns a lot. Whether it's just time out on the range training to include, honestly, shooting with my boys, which is always fun, or actually shooting these in a number of different classes, as well as some different competitions. And they across the board have done an amazing job for me. One of the things I appreciate about Sons Liberty Gunworks is properly gassed guns to where if you want to shoot unsuppressed, I don't know why you would, but they're appropriately gassed to be reliable. And then if you choose to shoot suppressed, they again are not like wildly over gassed. So I initially shot this setup right here. This is my 11.5 at a Steve Fisher Sentinel Concepts class, did awesome. And since then I ended up removing the bird cage, put on the Sons of Liberty Gunworks Knox, which this muzzle device will actually, you can pin and weld it. I'm not going to on 11.5, it's already SBR, but I have this on both this as well as my 16 inch. But if you have one of the Sons, I guess it's 13.7, it'll actually bring the overall length to 16 inches for NFA reasons. But it also pairs with the key mod, or chemo rather, mounting device. So right here, shooting this dead air can. And yeah, I've put probably most of my rounds through these guns with suppressors. They continue to just chug along. I will say like any other gun, they will get dirty and you will need to lube them even if not clean them. Something people ask sometimes is, hey, have you ever had a malfunction? Like, yeah. Of course I've had malfunctions. And it's one of those where sometimes it's hard to track down, like, hey, was the malfunction ammo related, magazine related, or was it actually gun related? The only ones I actually really remember, and I don't know if it was one or more than one, that I actually remember running these guns, aside from ones I set up in a class because we were working malfunction drills, was actually when I was, I'd skied out it was, I think, like negative 10. Probably could have used more lube on the gun. And yeah, I remember it did not want to feed for a minute. And then once I start shooting it more, it's like, all right, I remember what we're doing now. And yeah, pretty much shot through the rest of the day out there or into the night rather. Again, like negative 10, which is one of those things that's pretty interesting because you never really think about it till you're there, but yeah wild swings in temperature definitely affects things in different ways to include gas systems. Of course, people always want to know, is that gun a laser beam? Well, 
honestly, pretty much no guns and laser beam in my hands. But I did go out, shoot a number of five shot groups with both this, my 11.5, as well as my 16 inch. And yeah, here's what I got, shooting five shot groups at 100 yards. Initially shooting some Winchester white box, 223, 55 grain. First group coming in at 1.2 MOA. And my second group coming in more like Winchester white box at 4.17 MOA. My first group with some Frontier, 223, 68 grain boat tail hollow point coming in at 2.48 MOA. My second group with that Frontier match coming in at 2.5 MOA. Then switching to some Bernal 223, 55 grain full metal jacket. First group coming in at 2.15 MOA. My second group with that Bernal coming in at 2.26 MOA. Then moving over some PPU M855, 62 grain. First group coming in at 3.47 MOA. And my second group coming in at 3.3 MOA. Then moving over to some Federal Gold Medal Sierra Match Kings, 77 grain. First group coming in at 1.37 MOA. And my second group with some stringing for whatever reason coming in at 2.4 MOA. Next, switching over to my 16 inch. First group using that Winchester white box. 55 grain, first group coming in at 1.2 MOA. My second group, possibly with a flyer, still coming in at 1.6 MOA. Without that flyer, looking at 0.74 MOA. Pretty impressive for Winchester. Then moving over to some Bernal, 223, full metal jacket bow tail, first group coming in at 2.63 MOA. And my second group opening up to 5 MOA. Then switching over to some 75 grain match, bow tail hollow point from Hornady. First group coming in at 1.35 MOA. And my second group coming in at 134 MOA. And finally, going back to some gold medal Sierra Match King 77 grain. First group coming in at 0.82 MOA. And my second group coming in at 1.56 MOA. Without possibly that flyer would have been 1.0 MOA. What are my thoughts on those groups? Honestly, I'm not a ninja. I'm sure someone with the exact same setup and same ammo could probably do better, but pretty much with like match ammo, you can get down to or below one MOA groups, which yeah, that's pretty solid. So what are my thoughts on these guns? Honestly, they're rad. I, I really like them and they're not super fancy billet. Look at this cool machining we did. They're just hard use guns. And you get that talking with the guys too, to include Mike and I mean, even the armor's there, like everyone's passionate about it. And he'll tell you first and foremost, like, hey, reliability. That's what we're doing. Everything else comes second to that, as it should, honestly. And yeah, if something's not reliable, like, who cares? Doesn't matter how cool it looks. And these things have definitely performed just across the board in my use. I also just like, honestly, the aesthetic. They did a really amazing job with their M89 also, beyond like aesthetic as far as like incorporating, yeah, anti-rotation, the way it locks up, everything like that. And simple things too, where, hey, why not save weight where we can just make vents where no one's gonna mount things. And then if someone actually wants to mount something at like 11 or two, like, cool, they have the option up there. Just little nuanced stuff like that. Overall, I think they're definitely a really good value.